everyone. I'm Carlota Pico from the Content Mix, and I'm excited to be here today with Hugo Faria, who is EMEA Marketing Manager at Kemp Technologies and has over 12 years of experience in international marketing and communications. Welcome, Hugo, and thank you so much for joining us today on the Content Mix. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for, for the invite. And yes, I'm very excited to, for this interview. We are as well. Okay, let's jump straight into the interview then. Ugo, could you tell me a little bit about your background and also a bit about how you got into your current role? You're from Brazil, but, are, but you're now working in Ireland. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So, yeah, it's a long story, but long story short. So, uh, I started my career like 12 years ago. Uh, I started with Schneider Electric. So, Schneider Electric is a... It's a big company, like they are over like over 100,000 employees and like in different countries. So I started there as a print, so in internship. And yes, I just like was a very good experience that I had because I could like go through like start as a print. So I learned a lot at that stage I was studying at. So I was at school and then we could like learn a lot from marketing for all the activities and also they changed like when I first started there, uh, digital market wasn't that big. And then I could go through like this change in the marketing when moving from like the, the I would say like the old market activities like conference and all this kind of different activities moving for social media marketing, digital marketing, email marketing. So it was a very good experience and I think it was uh, that one uh, where like pretty much where I learned a lot. And then after that, uh, after almost 10 years at Schneider Electric, uh, I just decided that I want to, to go for a different adventure, for a different challenge. And then that's why I decided to move to Europe. So, so that was pretty much five years ago. So I have been living here in Ireland for over five years. And here has been like a different experience and very good experience, to be honest, because I, what I love most about Europe, it's, uh, I mean, like Brazil, it's a big country. We have like different, of course, way to, to generate leads and to do marketing. But Europe, like it's, it's a continent where every country is pretty much different. We have like different ways to generate leads in each country. So I, what I love most about Europe, it's this like this way that you have this diversity in different countries. So I think that's what I love most here. From a marketing perspective, what's, what, have you, what has your experience been so far on a professional level when it comes to having worked at Shiner Electric for over 10 years in Brazil and then transitioning to a European market working for a technologies company? Yes, was was like that a hard change because I was so used to like work like with different markets. And I, I think the main difference with IT marketing, it's, it's very fast, you know, like, uh, I mean, with marketing, like every day it's different. I think all the marketers, uh, we are used to, to, to every day, it's a different day, but especially with IT, it's, it's very dynamic. So like special for lead generation. So that was like a, a good change. Like I think it was, it's nice to have this kind of, of this kind of fast environment. It's it's in a good way, I think. So that was very good to be honest. And then, as I mentioned, like I think, like especially like the the different kind of countries and cultures. So I think that was good to see like things that probably work in German. It's not going to work in the UK or the other way around. So I think all this learning was very good. So I started that like five years ago when I first started working here in Europe. And then I was working at Vox Pro. And then I moved, after that I moved with Live Tiles. That's an IT company that they are, uh, their main product would be a intranet. So they work with SharePoint and intranet. And now with Camp, uh, it's, we are pretty much in the same business, so it's IT, and we are talking about load balancers. But it's good because all the experience that I got from Schneider Lab and all the companies, like it's pretty much you can use with IT. I think the idea about marketing is the same, so you just need to apply for the IT business. Okay, 
Oh, how has COVID-19 impacted your marketing strategy so far? Uh, yes, I think like it has, like, well, we were hit like, I think almost all the companies in the world, I think were hit by the, the, the coronavirus. So I think like it's, it has been like challenge times uh, to be honest, like if you go back, I, I would say the last years for marketers uh, it has been like a challenge. If you go back like 2018, when we start with the GDPR, that was like, I think the first uh, barrier that we found like as a marketer, because a lot of companies, they lost all the database and they had to, to change the database and to change websites and everything to be GDPR compliant. But uh, the way that I see, I see as also as an opportunity because I think like all the problems, all the the crisis, like the GDPR that we got to change things, and now with the this pandemic, I think if you find a way to see that as not just as problem but as an opportunity, I think you can make things better. So, for instance, with GDPR, a lot a lot of companies lost like database and like uh, audience but i think it was a good way to filter to clean up the database so this way you can get like more qualified leads so a lot of companies i i, I know that especially the company that i was working at that stage uh we did that work we clean up the database and pretty much we start from the, the from the scratch again but that was a good way to get more qualified leads and I think it's the same thing that's happened now with the, the coronavirus. A lot of companies, they, they have to change for digital marketing. So, uh, and that's good. Like, for instance, I know companies, as I work, for instance, Schneider Electric and other companies, like uh, old companies, I know that they usually, they spend a lot of money just with conference and they don't do like a balance between digital market and inbound market or different kind of markets. So I think that's a good opportunity now for companies to, to invest in digital markets and to see the, how good it's digital markets right now. So I think that has been a change for all the companies. And I mean, like, it's, of course, the business is not as was before the pandemic, but uh, it's good to see that a lot of companies, they are changed the way to, to do marketing in in a digital way, and I think that's something that could be good for the future, even after the, the pandemic. Okay, you mentioned GDPR. Did you use any tools to clean your database when uh, your company became GDPR compliant? Uh, not, I mean, like, was pretty much like the way that worked, like you were using market at that stage, so to, as a CRM. And like the way that worked, it's pretty much like after when they first released the, the GPR, we had to send an email to, to our the database to see if they accept to stay in the database, to share their, their data. And like most of the day, they didn't even reply the emails and we know like email marks. So we don't get like a good response for email marks. It's usually like around 10, 15 percent. So that was pretty much like the response that we got from from the audience. So the, I would say the database was clean itself, like just by the email mark. So they, they didn't want to, to stay in the, in the data, like in the, in the database. Okay, so those people that did not respond to your email, you deleted them from your database? Yes, pretty much. Like, uh, that was something that you did in purpose. Again, like I know that there, were, there are different ways, of course, you can reach them by phone and different ways to to try to get this, uh, this knowledge to, to stay in the database. But that was something that we did like in purpose because the idea was to clean up like the database, to stay just with the leads that they want to be contacted because that would be the loyal leads, the leads that they are already hot leads or warm up leads. And they move ahead. The idea was to create like a new database, but with more qualified leads. So to change a little like the code leads for qualified leads. And that worked very well. Like after like six months, we we start creating this new database. Like the open rate and click to rate in the emails, they got like over like was like something around 10, 15 percent, and we got like after that like something around 30, 35 percent. So 
we got like a very good increase in the open rate and click to rate and in business as well. So I think that was, as I said, was a problem at that stage, but we convert in opportunity. Okay. And it's the same thing that we are trying to do now with the, the pandemic. It's of course, uh, it's, it's for the business, it's not the same, but we are trying to convert with like different ideas to create, generate more qualified leads. Okay, excellent. We are moving into sales and the customer journey, which I understand you have a lot of experience in. Let's first explain what the customer journey is. So the customer journey is the complete sum of experiences that customers go through when interacting with a company and a brand. So instead of just looking at just a part of a transaction or experience, the customer journey documents the full experience of being a customer from start to finish. So, Ugo, tell me, why is a customer journey relevant to content marketing? Uh, uh, yeah, no, that's a very good question. I would say, like, it's totally relevant. It's, it's, it's like, it's very important because uh, if you think about the customer journey, like, every customer, they are in a different journey. So if you don't know where your customer, what your customer is looking for, or what, what they are, like, you can't create content for them. Like that's the main point. Like because I think the the main thing about the create content, it's you don't create like generic content. You want to create content that's relevant for your audience. That's the best way to to catch up today. And the best way to do that is to use in like the customer journey, so you can understand where your customer it's what your customer is looking for. So yeah, we always try to, to work like, so if we, when you think about the funnel, the, the leads funnel, we always try to have like three different contents. So for the top of the funnel, that's leads that they don't know probably the company or they are just looking for like uh, 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 what they need or sometimes they don't even know what they need. They're just looking for something and you can show them that they, uh, they might like something different. So for this kind of content, we always try to use like eBooks and different kind of, of material, like not talk about your company, like your, like, but talk about pain points. I think that's the, the main point. Like we need to educate this leads to, so you can like, he can understand a little more about what like his need, he needs and what it's important. And then we, we move for the middle of the funnel. So it's like when they are, they know already what they need, and now they are start like looking for like compare competitors and see what they need. So for us, like what worked very well, like in my experience, like in this part in the middle of the funnel, it's webinars. You can do webinars, demo videos, any kind of content that you can show, like because they already know what they want, so you can show how you can help them. So at this point, we always try to talk about pain points, but also show how your company can help them uh, to solve these pain points. And then after that, when they move for the bottom of the funnel, that's the, when they are ready for the, the purchase to, to buy something, then you can go like with more like tailored uh, uh, content. You can nail like free trials, demos or live demos. You can go through like show exactly like what you can offer. So you can offer like discounts. That pretty much depends. Like for B2B, I would say like, uh, it's different of B2C. So for B2C, you see like they offer discount vouchers or different kind of activities. For B2B, I think like demo, if you do like a, a, a personalized demo, something like special for the, the customer, I think that's the best way to, to get there in the last part of the funnel. Okay. So in terms of the first stage is more about eBooks. The second stage you would recommend webinars because they've already, they already know what they're looking for. And then the third stage, when you're really trying to seal the deal, it's more about free demos or different ways that they can trial your product and your service. Is that a good summary? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, so just answer your question. Like uh, that's why you need to know what, stage your customer is to create the, the content. So that's why it's so important the the customer journey when you're creating the content. Okay. Well, would it be possible to zoom into any real life examples, putting some of this uh, theory into action? Um, yeah. I mean, like, I think like what I could give an example, like, I think like nurture campaigns, uh, we have like 
have done a different kind of nurture campaigns that I think that's it's a good example. So you can get leads like from Google, like Google AdWords, or even like SEO, like any kind of lead that you can get from digital activities that sometimes you, you can go through like, and that's that's why it's very important, not just about create content, but you need to track the leads. So I think that's very important. Like most of marks, sometimes they are very worried about create content, but they forget that track the leads is very important because sometimes they can just be a lead that's in the top of the funnel. This lead can go silent for a while and they can come back, come back after a while. So you need to see where exactly where this lead is, what part of the funnel. That's why I think uh, track the leads, it's very important. But in another campaign, as an example, so we have run like different kind of campaigns that we get through all the top of the funnel. So we start with digital activity, you can get this lead from a digital activity. And then we have this campaign where you can go through like first like blog posts, ebooks, as I said, like just education content for them. And you can see like pretty much the lead coming through the funnel. So after that, you can see this lead he clicking a few links, he's kind of interesting in a few parts of this, this material. So that's important as well, because if you can track like his, you can see exactly what, what he's looking for. And so if you have a book, like you can have like ebooks for in another campaign, you have ebooks for different verticals. So you can have for education, healthcare, or for different parts of the product. So if you can see where this, this lead is click, you can go through like for the next step and then we go for webinars, different kind of market activities like demo videos, for, ex for example, it's very good as well. So, but you can see like in the nurture campaign exactly why this lead is coming. So right now, like I think like nurture campaigns, it's always good, but especially right now, if you can do like a proper, a good nurture campaign to go through your digital market activities, it's the best way to, to generate leads, like to get, to warm up the leads, not to generate, but warm up the leads right now. Okay, so what is a nurture campaign? <laughs> so a nurture campaign, I would say that's pretty much where we start, yeah, where you get the lead and you walk the lead through the top to the bottom of the funnel. So you want to nurture these leads and go through until that lead becomes an opportunity or even a, a business closet. So it's where you go through like the lead and you pretty much you, you say like what up the lead to become a lead, uh, opportunity this lead. Okay, excellent. So Ugo, do you use any tools to track your leads? We do, yes. Yeah. So I, pretty much all the companies that I work, uh, we use Marketo. So I think Marketo, we have different tools, but Marketo for me in my experience has been working very well. So you can track everything in a lead so you can see anything that you need, any kind of data that you need from this lead, you can use with Marketo. So for me, like Marketo, it has been working very well in, my, in all the companies that I have worked. So that would be my, my advice. Okay. Does that tool also allow you to track the lead throughout the customer journey? Or are you using other, other tools to track the performance of your content marketing campaigns? You can, yeah, with Marketo, you can actually, like, uh, I think the best way, if you can have, we work, like, for instance, like, in the companies that I use to work, they use, like, usually like Salesforce and Marketo. Because this way, you can pretty much, you can track, you can see the leads, where this lead came from, what they are looking for, what links they clicked, what they, they what are their needs right now. And then you can track these leads to see, like, for for instance, if this lead just goes silent and after uh, some time just revive, so you can see exactly like what revived this lead. So what he's looking for now sometimes could be something different that he was looking for before. So with market Salesforce, I think if you can link the, these two tools, you can get everything that you need just about tracking it. You have all the data that you need. Okay, very interesting. And so then... According to that data, are you creating different personas as well? Yes, yes, exactly. We have like we have like the, the main personas that we, we are targeting. So you can get from same thing from Arcade and Salesforce. So usually when you create a nurture campaign, you have this nurture campaign targeted for different personas. Okay. Okay, excellent. So, yeah.
Now, I do want to zoom into uh, another real life example and finish the section off with a marketing campaign or project that you're particularly proud of, its purpose, and what made it so special. All right. So uh, I think like, I can give you two examples. Um, first, before I talk about a marketing project that I have done, uh, I think like as you mentioned about COVID and like how markets change now, uh, I have like a few campaigns that uh, I think it's it's nice the way that they are doing because uh, again like it's not just about talking not just going through digital campaigns but I think like now with COVID and the, all this pandemic that has happened I think like the way that we, the message for the customer has changed so I think you, you need to be more positive you need to be more human so there are different ways to reach the the audience like in this time now with pandemic. So uh, I think like there are companies that have been following like uh, Budweiser and Dove. So different companies that I know that they are pretty much changed. Like even like the, the market, like you can see that they took off, like they say like they, they took off, like they changed all the images, uh, the message, everything in the campaign. And you can see that they are trying to, to help the community. So the March campaign, it's always about like help community and being positive and change that. So I think like there are different market campaigns right now that they are doing, I think they're doing like great with this change of message and showing people like that you can be positive, you can help the community and you can hold on like in these times. And so about a campaign, uh, I have done like so many campaigns, it's hard to pick up one like that uh, would be like special, but that is one that I did like when I was back at Schneider Electric that was about uh, energy efficiency. So that is like in March, it's the month of the, the energy efficiency. So it's all about like not waste electricity and how do you use your energy and like how to, to be more like green, like for the planet. And then for this campaign, we were like a, a monthly campaign that was pretty much the, the month of the energy efficiency. So we did like a, a complete campaign, a market campaign, not just digital market campaign, but with uh, events, uh, workshops, and like we engaged with the community as well. So it wasn't just about like generate leads, but also uh, to help to save energy and to help to the planet. So we did like a complete campaign to, to try to not just, as I said, generate leads, but to pass the message that as a company, we can help the planet. And we are like, we, we are worried about the environment and everything. So I think that it's, it's not just about generate leads, but it's about like the message that you want to pass to your audience, especially now that people are more sensible, more emotional. So I think if you pass the right message for for your audience, you are more likely to get like, not just leads, but loyal leads that people that it's going to identify somehow with your company. Okay, well, so what made that campaign so special? How did you get that? How did you, how did you create emotions out of that campaign? <laughs> I, I think it's pretty much about like the, I think like, as I said, the message that you pass. So uh, for instance, like you organize like different kind of activities. So for instance, like, we had one day that we, we would go for a parking uh, that was back in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. So we would go for a park and we would go for cycling there, use an uh, electrical bike. So this way you are going to, you are not using your car. So you could go for your work, use an electrical bike, and you could take pictures and share it on, on Facebook or social media. So we had like uh, some uh, sponsorships and also we have some agreements with uh, electrical cars so people could go for a drive through like a an electrical car to see how that works so we have like different like companies work with us to show like people that you can help like the environment in, in easy way you know it's not that hard you know with small things you can change the the, the world and help the environment and that's so i think that was about the message but about the the campaign itself i think what was good that I think it was one of the first time that we managed to do like a complete campaign 
where we, in, we pretty much involve everything. So it was press release, digital marketing. Uh, we, we end up the campaign with a big conference where we invite more than 500 people to go to this conference. And that would be like, not just specialists, but like different companies to talk about how you can use your energy in an efficient way and to save energy. So I think like all this, like what we got from this campaign, uh, we got like many of leads that came through, especially from the digital activities and for this conference that we did in the end of the campaign. But also we get like, I think more about, I think, as I said, like it was more about the message that you pass. Like, so the leads, of course, when you do a campaign like that, you can get all these leads and you can generate business. So uh, we generate business back in this campaign. So the, the campaign was paid itself just by the, the return of the investment. But it was more about the message, like all the, the media that we got, like press releases, newspapers, and all the, the, the media attention that we got from this campaign, I think was important as well as a brand warnings campaign, not just like a lead generation campaign. Okay, well, so basically you used what was in your city already, so electrical bikes, electrical cars. You gave the channel over to your employees, I understand. So you asked your employees to go to work on electrical bikes, on ele using electrical cars, etc. You took visuals of that, so videos, photos, etc. And then you use those visuals as part of your digital marketing campaign. And then on top of that, you also organized a press release. And that helped you to generate awareness around your brand. And at the same time, it helped you to bring leads into your business funnel. Yes, pretty much. But not just employees. We work like with clients and customers as well. So the idea was not just to use like the employees, but also to use like people, like real people. So we released a social media campaign, a Facebook, a Twitter campaign, inviting people to, to use these channels, like to use like these tools, like electrical bike and electrical cars to, to do like, to see how that works and to see how you could help to, to be more efficient with energy usage. It was okay. financed by the company? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. it was with, with the company. Okay, very cool, very cool. So the company decided to use the tools that were around the city and empower yeah. people to go green. Yeah, pretty much. Like, because you have the tools, but most of the people, they don't want to use. So I think that's important when you, you know, like, that you can help and not show, like, what how, how important it is to use, like, the energy in an efficient, efficient way. If you can show that, like, you, I think, like, people, they, they are more likely to use these tools and start, like, thinking about change. Mm -hmm. No, definitely, definitely. Okay, moving into our set of rapid fire questions, which are your recommendations to our audience. To get the section started off, I'd like to ask you about your source of inspiration, Uwe. So, an influencer or professional role model that you admire. All right. So, to be honest, like, there are a few that uh, I admire that I use. Like, uh, I, I like, I have done a lot of trainings in the LinkedIn learning session. I think they are fantastic. Like you can get like professional trainers there. And so most of the influencers that I'm following right now, they came from, from these LinkedIn learning sessions that you can get on LinkedIn Premium. But like one that I like, uh, I follow him like for a long time, it's Brad Page Sol. So he's the chief learning officer at Magecraft. So Brad, I like you can, if you follow him, you can see like he has, plenty of experience with marketing, B2B marketing especially, and how to generate leads, how to, to, to warm up leads, how to, to work with the, the funnel of the leads. So yeah, so it's one of the influencers that I'm always following. And that is another one that's, it's not totally about marketing, but he's, he's a storytelling. So he's very good, like if create content and how to create storyboards and how to tell stories, not just about create content, but the way that you tell the stories. So this guy, it's the Stefan Mama. So he's the director in the first person. So uh, if you follow him, like you can see, like he has like a lot of contents about create content. And like, as I said, like the way that you can tell stories and he has even like workshops and webinars that you can go through and you can, learn a little more about that so it's it's very good okay excellent i love how sales focused you are i'm also a very commercially focused person 
and everything that I do, I measure in commercial terms. So I, I really appreciate that part of your response and, and your insights. Okay, and to finish the section off, I'd like to ask you about your favorite book or app at the moment and why. Good, yeah. So I can share you like the, uh, it's, it's one of my favorite books, but uh, I just finished reading this book like uh, a few months ago. That's the name of this book. It's Contagious. So why things catch on. So what like this, this book for me, it's amazing because it's just like you can go through like it's about why there are things that goes viral and there are other things that doesn't. So how, what you need to do, like what kind of story you need to create, what, what are the things that catch on when you want to get something viral on social media? So it's 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 a very good book. Like it, there are a little about like March, but not just about March, but psychology, science. So it's a little about everything. So it's a it's a very good book. Like so, I, I would definitely recommend this book. Okay, very interesting. So give me the executive summary. What makes things catch on? <laughs> so yeah, as I said, like there are different ways, but like it all goes through like about understand your audience, you know, like, so again, like there are things that can go through, like there are sometimes things that go viral that you don't even know, like you just got luck, you know? So there are a lot of videos that you just see that just go viral. Like you don't, you weren't planning that, but when you are doing that as a business, it's all about like the message. So how you get people like emotional, you know, what you can do to understand your audience and go through, the emotional part of your audience. It's all about like not use so much, like you don't use, like you can see like most of the videos that goes viral, it's not about company products. And, you know, usually they have like a beautiful message, uh, something like cute, like they put like dogs or like kittens, some kind of, you know, it's all about like the way that we touch person, that the people, you know, so I think that's, that's, it's a very good reading. Like you can understand a little more that the way that, you want to create your content to, to catch on. Okay, excellent. Well, well, thank you so much for sharing those insights with us. It was awesome to meet you and great to have you on the show. Thank you very much. It was very pleasant for me. And yes, thank you very much. Okay. And to everybody listening in today, thank you so much for joining us on The Content Mix. For more perspectives on the content marketing industry in Europe, check out The Content Mix. We'll be releasing interviews just like this one every week. So keep on tuning in. Thanks again. Have a fabulous day and see you next time. Bye. Bye.